Jacksons. And Santa Claus is coming to town from Academy FM. Good morning. It's 23 minutes to 10. Saturday across Thanet. Nice to have your company. Busy programme this morning. And joining me in the studio is Kent County Council Councillor for Ramsgate, Karen Constantine. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Paul. Good to see you. Welcome to the studio. Thank you for inviting me in again. You're welcome. Now, we're going to be catching up to hear about some of the work that you've been doing across Ramsgate, across Thanet, across the district, because yep. you have been very, very busy yes I'll and be. lots of things going on at the moment isn't there really in general, yes just... There's, there's just so much going on I mean, it seems to me that everywhere you turn there is a an issue to be fixed something to be dealt with just so much to do and keeping on top of all the information keeping that flowing out yeah. is really quite important to me now firstly something that we can't escape is industrial action strikes it is yes. really filling the news at the moment and I've seen from uh, your own Facebook page yes. that you were down on the picket line at uh, Ramsgate State just a few days ago, uh, meeting the members of the RMT, weren't you? Yes, that's right. And I have to say, they make a lovely hot chocolate. Good. You know, so on, on, a, on a cold morning, if you go and support the picket lines, they will make you a nice hot chocolate. And I got offered donuts, so I'm very grateful to the RMT. But they are actually doing, you know, what they're doing is actually quite important, and they're not a lone group of workers, as you know. Mm. There's many workers now that under pressure, we've had, you know, austerity, we've got a cost of living crisis, wages haven't kept pace and so they're saying we want to negotiate, we want a pay increase and I do support that and I think a lot of the general public do as well. Yeah, I mean the rail strike has been going on for some time, that was really one of the first industries uh, to ballot for strike and that's been continuing for quite a number of months. Now we see other industries and other workers coming into strike as well, don't we? I think unless the government develop a strategy to start negotiating and genuine negotiators genuinely negotiating we are going to see more of this i mean i have been a negotiator for a trade union and what you want is you want an open dialogue and also you want the people around the table that can actually make the decision you don't want to talk to, to an underling that then has to go you know up a corridor to ask the question you want to negotiate with the right people and it has to be done in the framework of openness and, and genuinely wanting to to reach a settlement and so of course when you're looking at that and you're thinking about the you know the request for 17 percent or 18 percent yes that seems high but that's the starting point Definitely. Time the government negotiated, I think. And we see, we hear news of NHS, ambulance nurses also looking at striking, and that is happening as well. So it, it can affect us more than just catching a train, really. It is, but let's bear in mind that, uh, especially with nurses and midwives, uh, GPs, etc., they will always deliver the critical care, urgent care that is needed. Nobody ever goes off and joins a picket line when there's a patient struggling that's a given so we are looking at you know strikes um i think what the public need to be aware of is the fact that the nhs has been run down over quite a long period of time ambulance services certainly so they have got to strike not just because of the cost of living pressures but also because they are deeply concerned about patient safety and i think the public needs to bear that in mind i do yeah. Now, we are seeing, as we've talked about the cost of living crisis, as it's called, this cold weather that we've had in the last couple of weeks, which is really a, a cold snap, quite unusual before Christmas, affecting a lot of people because it has just been, uh, you know, below zero temperatures, really, hasn't it? Yeah. How, how are people able to cope in this kind of condition? I, well, I'm seeing a lot of people, I mean, people have said to me when I've gone out to meetings and I've been like, you know, with like several jackets on and a couple of hats and a scarf. Yeah. And it's not really an elegant look, let's put it that way. But I think most people are resorting to sort of uh, keeping warm. It doesn't matter how you do it, it doesn't matter how, how much you lay yourself up. I'm a really big fan of the heated blanket. I've got a couple mm. of heated blankets, I'm plugging those in. It's enabling me to keep the, the heating off but to stay to stay warm and i think it's really important that people stay connected they get out and about they do short walks you know and one of the great things that i'm seeing is people checking in on each other yeah you know people checking in on their neighbors making sure that they're okay and people asking for help i'm seeing this on facebook a lot asking for help and then the community is responding great. so it's it's very sad that people can't afford to put their heating on that's obviously very bad mm. and the costs are sky high but it is brilliant again in our community that people are responding to that challenge. We're going to talk about that a little bit in a moment. If people do need to have some help, you know, KCC does have some advice, some assistance. There is help out there for people as there, well, isn't there? Yeah, there's there's emergency help through Kent County Council, but also through through 
Thanet District Council. And again, I would urge people to reach out, to phone those numbers, or to reach out on Facebook or whatever media they use. And also, really, really want to emphasise this, ask, 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 because there will be something for almost everybody. There is some support for people, so please ask. Karen, stay there. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about 20s Plenty in a moment, which Great. is some real positive news uh, for Ramsgate and for Thanet. And also a little bit more about that community help, because it really is great to see the community uh, pull together in these times as well. Back with uh, KCC councillor for Ramsgate, Karen Constantine, after this from the Eurythmics. Joining me in the studio this morning is uh, Kent County Council councillor for Ramsgate, Karen Constantine. And we're talking about lots of things to do with Ramsgate, to do with Thanet. And uh, coming back to talk about about something that I'm a real supporter of is the campaign uh, for 20s Plenty. Yes. And we're seeing some of this already across, particularly in Margate. If you go to Sandwich, yeah. Sandwich Town Centre is a yeah. 20 mile an hour zone around there. Although, you know, with the small streets, you know, that makes perfect sense. But actually, it can be in any town centre or community, can't it? Yeah. I mean, I think it's uh, long overdue in the small streets of Ramsgate. Yeah. I mean, if you look at our streets there, oh, many yeah. of them are very tight, they're very narrow. You've got a lot of pedestrians you know you've got a lot of road users cyclists etc and actually what you've got is a fairly unhealthy and toxic mix of fast-moving traffic and slow-moving people and the people are very vulnerable and we've seen accidents and we've seen some absolute tragic accidents and we need to do something about it so mm. it seems to me it's time overdue for 20s plenty right across Ramsgate so where are we with this campaign with this sort of proposal now for Ramsgate well I think you know we've seen a number of different ac action groups so there's Dun there's the Dumpton Park Road action group that they they want a 20 mile an hour zone so we're in discussions with highways Kent highways of course and um, we called a public meeting uh, a few weeks ago that was quite a good turnout and um, they want a 20 mile an hour zone um, it's not universal some people are against it I, un I understand that it will take us time we are going to get some streets being reduced down to 20 miles per hour but I think we need to go much further you know I think we need to create an area whereby people and traffic can mix very safely. Yeah. And I think we need to win the hearts and minds because one of the things that I'm noticing, I don't know if you've noticed this, is some of the driving is appalling. Oh, yeah, definitely. Why are they in a such a hurry? Especially Please, this time slow of year. Down. Especially yes. when it's dark. You yes. see that even more so, I think. When, it's you know, awful. It's yeah. some appalling driving. And I do stop and shout. <laughs> Exactly. Now, to get to a 20 mile hour speed limit, it does take time. It's not just a five minute fix. No. There's lots of uh, hoops and hurdles to get through, isn't there, really? So it's quite a long process. Yes. I mean, we, we, we've started the process. There is a highways improvement plan in place, which is available from Ramsgate Town Council, so people can see what's going to happen in their area. Um, there is a way of doing it, which would be based on automatic number recognition, so that cars that were speeding would get fined, but obviously that is an investment yeah. and we're not currently, as a country, in that stage where we're investing in these we things. More's the pity. Yeah, yeah, More is the pity. More is the pity. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a meeting planned for in the new year, is that I'm right? hoping to have a meeting planned in the new year. I'm hoping that I can get the police there. I'm hoping this time, I have invited them, I can get the highways agents, highways there from Kent County Council. And very importantly, I'm hoping we, I can get our local MP, Craig McKinley, to attend because so far he hasn't. And I think that's wrong and yeah. he should. Definitely. Uh, we're going to follow that uh, into the new year because that is very, very interesting and a real important topic. Now, community help, we're going to talk about that. But before yes. we come to that, it's, it is connected. We talked about it being cold this time of the year, very cold. The warm banks, which have actually sprung up across Thanet, normally yes. in, in public places, uh, whether it's a council or, or district or, or county council or building, uh, looks like that's going to be extending to some other locations. And you're involved in this, aren't you? Yes, I'm hoping to support a small business uh, with the idea of opening you know monday to friday nine to five business hours as it were for the those people that work at home either as uh one-man bands entrepreneurs or people that are working from home working on projects you mm. know self-employed because that group of people so far have kind of been left to the side there's lots of spaces for, for other people to go you know relatively speaking i'm also hoping that we can do other things like you know distribute i mean it sounds a bit crazy but distribute hot water bottles etc yeah. so that we can we can encourage people to take the steps that they need to take to stay warm yeah now many people are working from home 
perhaps their office has now closed down. Of course, that's only great in the summer when you can enjoy the weather this time of the year. When it's cold, you've got to heat your house all day, every day, yes. which actually is added expense. And, of course, before you go to work and you enjoy the, the heat of the office, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's a huge expense, you know, and so I think what I'm advocating is heat the person not the room yeah. wherever you can yeah. so you know take what steps you can to stay warm and we touched on that and people are wearing their bobble hats indoors i know i do i mean it, it's not a glamorous look paul but you well, know it works <laughs> it works fine on radio let me tell you <laughs> maybe not on the zoom call <laughs> Uh, now, you talked about community help a little bit, and what you've said to me you are seeing is community really pulling together, and that yeah. is fantastic in these times. And to be honest, never a better place for community to pull together than Thanet. Yeah, well, that's true, and we saw that during COVID. And I, mm. I would just like to urge people now if, if to look out for your neighbours, look out for your, you know, your friends, check in on people that have suddenly gone quiet or that you haven't seen round and about uh, for maybe a few days but also think about the food banks because um, you know I am hearing now that food banks are running out of food and that you know they're opening their doors knowing that they're going to be turning people away empty-handed and obviously you know it's deplorable that we're in that situation but I think as a community if we can st you know stand up for other people make some sort of donations if you can't do that directly you can do that online and if anybody wants to know where to contact food bank they can contact me i'm you know i can put them in touch with the relevant uh, the relevant uh, food bank definitely and of course if you see those that are in supermarkets collection points just think yeah. about buying one extra item yeah. to put in there because this time of the year is a real crucial time yeah. and that one extra tin that can or whatever it might be yeah. can go a long way to helping those that do need some support yeah i, I mean i do think genuinely do what you can i mm -hmm. mean this is a very difficult time for people but it would be remiss of me as a labor politician not to point out that we are the sixth richest nation on the planet and really there should be a, a fairer spread of wealth across the community and there has been a bit of a shakedown hasn't there where Definitely. the very poorest have lost their money yeah it's gone to the very richest and that is deplorable yeah karen thank you for joining me this morning i'd like to wish you a merry christmas merry christmas to you and i hope to see you in the new year enjoy your festive time and always great to catch up with you and hear about the uh, the work you're doing uh, for ramsgate and for the community thank you for your time and thank you to you and Academy FM, Paul. Have a good Christmas.